What's up you guys? It's been a while since I made a video. I'm not dead, I'm still alive, still kicking. Um, I wanted to make a little, quick little update video because we've made a little bit of progress on the motor. Um, first things first, we had a, a viewer tell us on one of our videos, they commented saying that I should not be using the ARP flywheel bolts because the ones that ARP sells are actually too long so they bottom out on the crank when you screw them in and won't give you accurate torque reading. So they could actually have the potential to back out while the motor's running and pretty much the flywheel can come off and destroy the whole motor, destroy the transmission. So we don't want that happening. Uh, we're going to double check. We're going to take them out and compare them to the OEM flywheel bolt length and see if that's actually true or not, see if they're actually longer. Um, I did a little bit of online research and I saw in a lot of forums that that's actually a genuine problem. A lot of people have this problem when building K-Series. Um, they recommend using OEM bolts and just a dab of like Loctite, Loctite blue or Loctite red, whichever you prefer. And that should solve the problem. So we took the pressure plate off already. We're going to throw away all these old uh, ARP bolts that are used and stretched. And we are going to use all OEM stuff with a little bit of Loctite. So some other things that we've done to the motor are we've switched out the JDM water pump housing uh, for a USDM unit. Here's the old JDM one. Now, the reason we did this is because the mountings for the alternator and the tensioner and all that, they're all different compared to the USDM one. The shape is entirely different. So if the alternator ever went bad, you would have to find a JDM alternator in order to fit it onto the JDM water pump housing. And that would be a pain in the ass. So since USDM stuff is more readily available, uh, we went ahead and swapped out to a USDM water pump housing. That way we can use all the USDM accessories. Um, we also put a fluid damper on because we had this laying around and figured it would improve the motor's acceleration and smoothness. Uh, what else have we got? We put the upper coolant housing on. We're just using the OEM one because that's what we had laying around. The JDM uh, thermostat housing did not fit, so I ordered this PLM uh, swivel neck housing. This is a really nice unit. It replaces the plastic uh, thermostat housing and also comes with the thermostat as well. My friend JJ hooked me up on that. Um, we also got ourselves a PLM K-Swap radiator. And with our spall fan, this is some really nice stuff. It's all made in Taiwan, no China stuff. So I haven't even opened this yet. I should probably take a look, but yeah, JJ hooked me up on all this stuff and I still have a discount code. So I'll probably be ordering a lot more PLM stuff for the swap. They've got everything you need. Now, without wasting any more time, let's get to it with installing the OEM pressure plate uh, bolts and flywheel bolts. Of course, while we're back here, we did replace the rear main seal so that in case it ever does leak, we don't have to pull the transmission off again. All right, now that we have the bolts off, we're gonna see if this is actually a real issue or if it's a myth. Um, we have an OEM bolt here and an ARP bolt. Let's put them side by side and see if they're actually any different in length. OEM bolts on the right, ARP bolt on the left. They are exactly the same length. Well, so the guy that commented, I'm glad you spoke up. Uh, you ended up being wrong because I ordered the K-Series specific ARP bolts and they're actually the same length as the OEM bolts. So even though it cost me some money, I'm glad I double checked because I did read a lot of forums saying that the previous ARP bolts are too long, but they probably revised it in the meantime and these are the correct length. Once again, put them side by side. They're exactly the same length. So kind of disappointing, but 
but people have had it happen to them, maybe with the older ARP bolts, but the ones that I had were correct. So it was a good thing I checked. I'm glad I did check or else it'd be bothering me for the rest of my life. And now we have some fresh OEM bolts to put in instead. And as they say, OEM is always better. We've got these beautiful Honda packaging. You can throw those on. Here's a little trick if you have your motor set up on a cart like I do. I've got my breaker bar on the crank pulley side so that when I tighten the bolts on the other side, it won't rotate because you do not want your K-Series to rotate counterclockwise. Now, what you want to do with these to get a correct torque reading, um, I've got a little bit of the ARP lubricant. But what I do is I just put a tiny bit on the head of the bolt underneath the lip here. And that's going to help lube it up so that the friction doesn't give you an incorrect torque reading. And the Loctite Red here, you just want to put a little drop, just a drop, nothing crazy. And that little drop is going to spread down the rest of the threads when you thread it on. So. And we'll do the opposite side. So all of our bolts are in. Make sure you torque these in a star pattern. It's gonna be uh, increments of 30, 60, and 90, or I think OEM torque spec is actually 80 something, but I'm gonna tighten them to 90 just in case. Make sure you Thread them in and torque them before uh, your 20 minutes is up. I think the Loctite uh, dries up in about 20 minutes. So, Also make sure you're not touching the clutch disc with your fingers, the flywheel, or the pressure plate surface because you can introduce oil and that will cause it to not grab correctly. Now the part that's sticking out more is going to be facing towards you. So I'm going to set that up get the tool through here. I'm gonna stick the tool through the clutch disc. Wiggle it on in there. Make sure everything's flush. Get our pressure plate. And the pressure plate only goes on one way according to the studs here. So you kinda gotta spin it around until find the correct orientation. Oh, we got the freaking pressure plate on. I had to spin it around a few times to find the right orientation. And don't worry about the, it's sitting flush with the pins. Sometimes it's a little tight to get on, so you just have to torque it down for it to slide all the way on. And with these bolts, um, I'm gonna set it to 20 foot pounds. I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, blue Loctite. I don't think it's as crucial for these ones. All right, so we got all the pressure plate bolts torqued down. You can take this out now, since the pressure plate is clamping on the clutch disc. Ooh, it was stuck in there. There we go. So now that's ready for the transmission to bolt onto. And speaking of transmissions, we have our K20Z3 transmission. I have a buddy, Jason, who's helping me out with the swap. He's a lot more knowledgeable than I am. Um, he actually sold us this R6 Type S shift mechanism and he drilled or threaded new um, threads into the case for us so that we can run it. I think two of the bolts uh, go in normally, but you have to thread the third hole in order to run the RSX Type S uh, shift mechanism. I don't think we'll be using that OEM one. We've got a billet shifter that we'll be using, but we've got the shift plate over there. It's ready to go. Transmission's ready to go. Shift's nice and smooth. And the motor is almost ready to go. Just have to find some hoses 
for the thermostat housing. We've got both the alternator tensioner on and figure out where all the lines go. I bolted the VTEC sensor on. Uh, what else do we have? I think that's it, guys. I think we're almost ready for this to be put into the car. So that's pretty much all I have for today's video, guys. I do have a few more parts to show you, like the K-Pro, the wiring harness, and that other stuff, but I'll save that for another video when I do a build breakdown, cost breakdown for the rest of the parts. Um, there is a lot more money that needs to be spent, and a lot more time that needs to be spent. I gotta take the dash out, and we actually need a new chassis harness because the previous owner cut the chassis harness at the firewall for some reason. Back, but. We'll get that shit done. A lot of parts sitting around. All that's left is to put it all together. Goodbye.